I know for an absolute fact that a lot of you have quit Call of Duty multiple times throughout your careers, your lifespans of playing Call of Duty as a franchise, myself included. Many of you watching this video probably either used to play Call of Duty or you still do. But if you are a Call of Duty player, you probably used to play it a lot more than you do today. So what changed? Why are so many people walking away from this franchise? Welcome to the channel, everybody. Chaos today. We're going to look at those reasons, those glaring, burning reasons why people are quitting the COD franchise. In the comments, you can tell me which reason you relate to the most. Keep it constructive. Drop a like on the video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And the first one is simple. You're tired of the bugs. I don't blame you. If you're one of the many people who has walked away from Call of Duty as a franchise because of all the bugs, I get it. It's hard to get invested in the game when you never know if it's actually going to run properly. You never know. If you're going to lose your match progress because the game crashed, or if you're going to lose an important gunfight because the game stuttered, or if you're just going to look at your stats and discover the challenge you were working on wasn't even being tracked. Call of Duty is incredibly buggy, and I don't know how that's still possible when they literally have thousands of people working on it, but it is. I say it every year. I hope Call of Duty fixes its bugs in the near future, but at this point... I think it's just another thing about the series that will probably never go away. Before we move on, guys, get in on this. If you are a Spider-Man fan, specifically across the Spider-Verse, they have free limited edition across the Spider-Verse shakers. These are the steps to get them. The link is at the top of the description. They will go fast. So you guys definitely, definitely check them out in all the deals that are going on right now. That is a vitamin shop G Fuel collab. Those shakers are fire. Next up, you're tired of the sweats. I'm not talking about the meat sweats. I'm not talking about the sweats you get when you get a fever. I'm talking about cod sweats. Call of Duty has always had its fair share of sweats. They've always been there, but they've never, ever, ever been this sweaty and this close together. Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone had some ridiculous players, and I do respect the amount of effort it takes to be a sweat in this game, but it's not fun to play against you. In previous COD games, sweaty players were at least, or at least weren't the obnoxious thing they were today because the gameplay was still fun. But in Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2, the gameplay isn't fun in the first place. So when people are running around being super sweats, it's all COD champs, it makes the game somehow even less fun. But honestly, I'd rather have sweats than campers. Campers. Camping is another thing that's always been in Call of Duty, but never to the degree that it is now. Campers are everywhere, and the modern uh, COD devs have made it very clear, crystal clear, they're okay with that. The maps are designed for them, the guns are designed for them, the challenges are designed for them, the lighting is designed for them. Literally everything in Modern Warfare 2 is designed for campers and bad players, and Infinity Ward did such a fantastic job that the game is insanely unfun for anybody who doesn't want to camp. I mean, they even gave the campers a special nickname, remember? They don't want to call you campers, they want to call you sentinels. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, you're not a camper anymore. You're a cool sentinel. And at this point, you're ruining what little fun is left in the game. Sentinels are still campers. Next up, you don't have the time. This is an interesting one, but it's one that I hear a lot. Back in the day, Call of Duty used to be a pretty easy game to grind because of all the challenges. They were actually based on merit. They relied on you doing specific things. But now, a lot of the unlocks are completely tied to time played and they require this ridiculous amount of time for you and a lot of other people it's discouraging. Why would you log onto a game that's based around progression if you know for a fact that you don't have the time to unlock the stuff that you really want? A lot of people are walking away from COD because of how much of a grind everything is now, and I honestly can't blame them. At number six, DMZ resets. It was recently announced that DMZ is completely being reset with the season four update, and this is not the first time it's happened. A lot of people weren't happy about it, and uh, I know it's extraction-based games. They do wipes from time to time. I get it. But a lot of DMZ players aren't happy about the fact that all their work is going right down the tubes without much warning. I don't think it's weird for people to want their efforts in a high-state game like DMZ to have some long-lasting lasting effect. You put the time in. You earned it. But speaking of DMZ, DMZ pay-to-win bundles. I can't believe I, I said that, but I did. The fact that legitimately pay-to-win mechanics have been introduced to DMZ is insane to me. It blows my minds. I, I don't have minds. I have one mind, but it blows multiple minds anyway. I'm honestly amazed that Activision Infinity Ward thought they would uh, slide it in there. There's a few paid bundles available in the store that give you immediate and obvious advantages when you use them in the DMZ mode, meaning there's a way to literally pay real-world money and get a gameplay advantage in an extraction shooter. That's just uh, fundamentally going against the point of the game. But it's also insane that something so obviously pay-to-win and predatory makes it into Call of Duty after all the controversies this franchise has dealt with throughout the years regarding other micros transaction models. I thought the move to Seasons and Battle Pass meant they didn't have to do stuff like that. 
part of me is wondering if there's actually going to be another massive overhaul of the business model soon, so Activision is just throwing everything at the wall before that happens, because if you've been playing COD for a while, you know this isn't the first time. Back during the Black Ops 4 life cycle, Activision started monetizing the game more aggressively than ever before. They implemented a battle pass, a daily item store, and supply drops on top of all the paid season passes, and as it turns out, it was likely because Modern Warfare 2019, the next game in the series, was completely overhauling the monetization. So the fact that COD is once again becoming super monetized kind of worries me and leads me to believe there is going to be a huge change in the business model within the next year or so. But until then, grit your teeth, because nothing excuses the addition of literal pay-to-win mechanics like that. At number four, the time to kill is too quick. I don't know why Call of Duty still insists on having a ridiculously fast time to kill, but it needs to go out the window. With the time to kill being so fast, it makes these gunfights feel random, makes them feel uncompetitive. Call of Duty has always been a, or it's always had a pretty quick TTK, but before Modern Warfare 2019, it was never fast to the point that the game felt that unfair. Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 have serious TTK problems that still have not been ironed out, simply because Infinity War wants the game to be this way. That's not good. It's honestly gotten frustrating as a fan of the franchise to see how many things in the community have you been unified on, and yet the problems remain unfixed. I don't like, I don't, I don't feel like the community is asking for much when they want the time to kill to be slightly turned down, do you? At number three, you are an X-Labs player. This is a heartbreaker. For those that don't know, X-Labs is a fan project that helped revive older Call of Duty games on PC and keep them safe. The most popular one, IW4X for the classic Modern Warfare 2, but X-Labs also hosted servers for Ghost, Black Ops 3, and I believe Advanced Warfare. But Activision hit them with a cease and desist in May of this year, and I'm baffled. X-Labs was a godsend for PC players who wanted to play classic God games, but didn't want to worry about hackers and cheaters. Plus, there were so many mods available for the games through X-Labs that made the experience better. IW4X for Modern Warfare 2 was popular. Activision choosing to shut it down really makes no sense because it's not like they were making any money off the classic Modern Warfare 2 games anymore. Needless to say, if you were an X-Labs player, you probably walked away from Call of Duty altogether after the last month. I get it. At number two, you were waiting for SM2. Speaking of cease and desist, X-Labs weren't the only ones to receive that from Activision in May. The SM2 project was this highly anticipated fan game that was basically going to be a greatest hits Call of Duty game that featured dozens of guns, maps, all throughout Call of Duty history, complete with a unique progression system and tons of cosmetic content. And it was all going to be completely free to the player. And the developers, they weren't going to make any money from it. They were simply doing it out of love for the franchise. However, after years of development, the SM2 devs announced in May that Activision had shut them down. It wasn't even out to the public yet, but it seems Activision was concerned that the fan project was actually going to outperform the official Call of Duty release, or at least that's the only reason I can think of that they would all of a sudden crack down on them despite the project publicly existing for years. Activision seems to have had a change of heart when it comes to fan projects in Call of Duty, and it's a shame, because these, these, ama these were amazing. They brought the community together. And finally... You are a PC player in general. PC players have been getting seriously screwed over recently. In the late 2010s, Activision decided to start putting more effort into their PC Call of Duty ports, and for a while, it looked promising. The PC ports of Black Ops 4 and Modern Warfare 2 2019 were pretty solid, but as time went on, things got worse. Not only do the PC versions of Call of Duty come with this ridiculous performance issue and a horrible optimization table, but now Activision is going around sending cease and desist letters to people just trying to keep the classic COD games alive on PC. So if you're a PC player who likes Call of Duty... You can't play classic CODs without dealing with cheaters. And you can't play modern CODs without dealing with the optimization and the crashes. It's a very frustrating video. I apologize. But that's where we're at. And that's the state of things. Let me know if you've walked away from Call of Duty or if you're still hanging on. I'll see you soon.